Hi there everyone, Lars here from Camille's Harem. Not just a podcast for novice writers by novice writers, but also a YouTube channel by novice writers for novice writers. Because writing is an adventure, it's more fun with friends. And today I come to you with a D&D think piece about romance. We are finally in the month of February, the month of romance, and there is a lot to talk about here. So one of the infamous aspects of Dungeons & Dragons is the potential for romance within the game. There are so many fantastic horror stories regarding romance at the table of Dungeons & Dragons, but there's also a lot of really sweet, awesome ones. And as novice writers, we might want to know, okay, what kind of lessons can we glean from these games of Dungeons & Dragons where romance is played out? Because romance is one of the hardest things to write, and yet with Dungeons & Dragons, because it is community storytelling, people are playing off of each other, it is a perfect opportunity to see what happens when romance actually works between characters and when it fails miserably. So that way you can take a step back and be very honest and say, okay, this is what worked, this is what didn't, and I can apply that to my own story. And uh, I might as well just get out of the way. There's going to be some people who really it doesn't matter. They're going to see the obvious that what they're doing is awful and they'll just double down on it because it is the romantic fantasy that I want. No, we're not going to entertain any of that here. So I'm going to give you two different experiences that I've had as a player and as a dungeon master where I've experienced romance at the table, where it didn't work and where it kind of worked. So let's dive on into it. My first instance of romance was as the player. I was playing a druid satyr who, as we were going along, heard the sweet, beautiful music of this nymph in the woods. And I'm a satyr. And so, totally acting within character, I'm like, oh, there's a nymph nearby. So I go and I search, and lo and behold, there's this beautiful water nymph. And I'm a satyr. What's a satyr going to do? A satyr is going to flirt. So I go, and the dungeon master was so ticked off that I was daring to flirt with his NPC. And I went up anyway, and he's like, fine, roll to flirt. And I rolled a natural 20. So I flirted, I wooed the nymph, and I'm all like, hey, guess what, everyone? I now have my girlfriend. Woo! And the dungeon master, to get back at me for rolling a natural 20, decided that he was going to use the nymph's beauty to blind everyone. So we all had to roll constitution saving throws. I survived mine. He was so mad in the process our thief got blinded. And everyone then blamed me because the dungeon master was like, no, it's Lars's fault that any of this is happening. He wasn't supposed to seduce the nymph. I'm like, dude, my character's a satyr. Your character's a druid. They're basically celibate. My character is a satyr. Satyrs and nymphs just go together like peanut butter and jelly. Well, so because the dungeon master was so angry that I had managed to woo this nymph with my natural 20 and with my satyr charms, he decided to throw us into a random encounter to scare off the nymph. As a result of what happened, he later on told me that I had derailed his entire campaign because I got us away from the nymph, that he had this whole quest planned out for us, that she was going to set us on this fantastic journey and that we were going to be heroes of the land and yada 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 and that all of that was derailed because I flirted with his nymph. This is where if you are the dungeon master you have just simply got to roll with it. There was really no reason that he gave why the nymph could not still have delivered the quest to us uh, despite the fact that my character and her were now in some wonky relationship. And to be all honest, he could have been like, hey, dude, you got to keep on rolling to try to keep this nymph interested because it's a nymph. She's going to be flighty and everything. That would have been a really cool thing to do. But no, it was just he wasn't happy that I seduced the nymph with a really bad flirt and a natural 20. <laughs> So one lesson that I think we should already take away from this right here is if romance begins to blossom, whether in a game or whether within a story, unless it completely contradicts what you're actually intending to do, 
Well, why not play around with it a little bit if you wish to pursue romance? And there are plenty of instances where romance is absolutely not needed. No, my character didn't need to flirt with the nymph. There was no need for a little side romance, but I was just acting within character. And that's another lesson that we should take away as novice writers. Romance needs to be within character. It needs to make sense. If a character would not flirt with so-and-so, or if they're just kind of a bad pairing, but you as the author ship them in your head, you've got to do more than just simply ship them. You have to set it up. You have to make it where, even if their personalities are not compatible, that there's a way for them to become compatible over time, that they can build a relationship. Maybe not a romance right off the bat. Maybe just a begrudging friendship or a real friendship. Maybe they're best buds or what have you. You, but there has to be some sort of chemistry. It has to make sense, even with your own characters. And this is something I see happen so often with novice writers that they just say, these characters are meant to be together. It's going to be wonderful. It's going to be beautiful. And I ship them so hard. And I have read through their stories. I've been giving them critique and editing advice. I'm like, I don't understand why these two characters would be together. None of this makes sense. I'm just told, don't worry, it'll make sense. Don't just ship your characters. Take time to build up relationships. And within your own writing, take time to build up relationships and if a simple flirt is going to somehow derail everything that you've planned you might want to go back and have a look at your story my second story involving romance was when i was a dungeon master and i was playing through our city campaign gangs of arrow isle if you want to check out the overall story for that please go check out uh, the four-parter video that i did on the gangs of arrow isle but in that campaign, one of the little side stories that was really fun to just play out was when one of the characters, or one of the players, I should say, decided to just massively crush on one of my NPCs. A character that I hadn't even really done anything with. I just kind of made him on the spot, threw him on in there to help add like tension and bodies to this crime scene as investigators and the police force are all milling about investigating this horrible, uh, brutal fight. And, and the player was just like, I want to flirt with him. And so they led up their character to go and flirt with this random NPC. And I mean, it was not anything I had planned for, but I was like, sure, you know what? Try it on out. And so they they gave their whole spiel. We carried on a conversation. They tried to flirt as like roll, uh, roll for charisma right there. And the role wasn't great, but I thought, you know what? Like, Let's, let's give this player like a chance right here. Not all relationships start off with sparks flying and ooh, ah, this is so fantastic. This is so amazing. Sometimes it begins with a strong friendship. And so I had the care, I had the NPC be like, I kind of see what this, what this player's doing right here. I'm not exactly interested, not at the moment, but you know what? They're cool. I'm going to talk with him a little bit more. And so we kept on carrying on a conversation. And each time that the player wanted to flirt, I was like, try ahead and, and flirt. And it was fun. We never got a chance to really see where it would go, but it was fun just having this friendly, flirtatious relationship between between an NPC and one of the characters. And it's something that if we had more time to play through, I think we could have really seen where this would have gone. And that's something that once again is not really appreciated with romance writing or romance role playing within Dungeons and Dragons. Let things develop naturally. It shouldn't take one role. Like going back to the whole thing with the satyr and the nymph, my character should not have completely won over the nymph with a natural 20. It's a hilarious story and I love it, but I should have had more time to try to develop a true relationship with the nymph and really earn my lucky role of a natural 20. And again, just the dynamic between the player and the NPC was just a whole lot of fun. It was something that a lot of the other players looked forward to, where they encouraged them to be like, go, 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 flirt, flirt, it'd be awesome, we're right behind you. And and it just, it built up a great group dynamic. And that's, that's what you want, I think, when you role play romances between players and NPCs, or even between players within a game, is that it should be something that takes time you should have fun with it and if other people really aren't into it then make sure that you read the room and everything it's the same thing as you write 
Relationships should take time to develop as you write them out in your stories. And it should be something, it should be a relationship that means something to other characters as well. And they should either get behind it or they don't get behind it. And that's where you can have a whole lot of fun. If they do get behind it, why do other characters support this potential relationship? That's a great way of pulling out other character development and great character interactions. And if they don't support it, it's a great source of drama that can tease out character feelings, experiences, backstory so play around with it a little bit more don't just snap your fingers and make the relationship happen because you then lose a lot of the magic and a lot of the fun that can happen by playing through the romance now as opposed to a lot of my other DD episodes here on camille's harem where i have waited until the end to really give my writing advice i've given quite a bit throughout this video so allow me instead to give you what i hope will be some solid dungeons and dragons advice for romance and it is this whether you are a player or the dungeon master don't be entirely opposed to it unless it is part of that person's character that they're either already in love with someone else maybe they're asexual or they're just not completely interested and that should be something that you figure out ahead of time otherwise it's kind of free game and if romance begins to happen tease it out a little bit have some fun with it see what happens but always be careful for toxicity at the table because some people can take it too far. Romance at the table is in and of itself not a bad thing. I've seen some really great stuff happen playing Dungeons and Dragons. I've actually seen two of my good friends get married because of the fun, in part because of the fun dynamic that they had while playing these games. So it's not something I would personally discount, but if you as a player or as the dungeon master begin to see red flags going up, it's time to kind of call quits to it, call attention to what's going on, don't worry, other people will thank you for it, and talk it out, prevent toxicity from happening before it gets too bad. And if someone just continues to aggravate the situation, then it will be time to take further measures, figure out what you can do with that player to help stop it, or it's either time to end the game or boot the player. Sometimes you have to do that. I, as a dungeon master, have taken players aside before and have said, look, you need to get your act together. You're making people uncomfortable. If you continue doing this, you're out of the game. So yeah, there is my romance advice for Dungeons and Dragons and also in part for writing. If you are a novice writer looking for more writing advice, please check out our other videos here on YouTube. We'd also love it if you went over to our podcast, Camille's Harem, found on Podbean, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, The Works. We've dived into much greater depth as far as romance writing goes. We also have our commandments about shipping, which you should definitely check out. We also have writing exercises for you over at our Pinterest page, and we would love for you to be part of our community of novice writers. Links for all of those sites are in the description. And until the next video, y'all, keep on playing D&D and choose.